Okay, welcome back. Um, <laughs> this is my second video that I've done back to back. Um, but I'm going to read, um, and I'll probably break this up, but I'm going to read, it's called the the D-I-D-A-C-H-E. And supposedly this was written by the 12 apostles between 50 and 150 A.D. And um, it's just a, a good book. Um, it's claimed to be the apoc an apocrypha uh, book, but um, I uh, oh no, But here we go. So this is chapter 4. My child, you will remember day and night him who speaks the word of God to you, and you will honor him as the Lord. For where the Lord's nature is spoken of, there he is present. And you will seek daily the presence of the holy ones, that you may find rest in their words. And you will not desire a schism, but will reconcile those that strive. You will give righteous judgment. You will favor no man's person in reproving transgression. You will not be of two minds, whether it will be or not. Do not be one who stretches out his hands to receive, but shuts them. Um, so basically it's saying don't... Um, the schism is basically a um, a divide um, where you're trying to... Like a, <clears throat> a distraction... Um, not a distraction. A division. And we're not to do that. Um, <clears throat> and we're also supposed to... Um, tell people where they have gone off off the path. And I've heard many people say it, that we're not supposed to judge. Well, there, right there it says um, that um, you are supposed to do righteous judgment. So, um, but, and then it says, uh, do not be one who stretches out his hands to receive, but shuts them when it comes to giving. Um, and whatever you have, um, have gained by your hands, you will give a ransom for your sins. You will not hesitate to give, nor will you grumble when you give. For you will know who the uh, good paymaster of the reward is. You will not turn the needy away, but will share everything with your brother, and will not say that it is your own. For if you, uh, you are shares in the imperishable, how much more will the things which perish? And your brother, by the way, is <clears throat> like your Christian brother, if you turn people away that need your help, um, then you're not doing the will of God. And we're supposed to be sharing more than just money. We're supposed to be sharing resources and other things as well. <clears throat> and I know a lot of people scoff at that. And they're like, oh, I'm not sharing my blow or my um, my leaf blower or my lawnmower. Because last time I did that, well, so-and-so hurt, hurt my mower and I had to get it repaired. Um, so it says to share all things. Um, you will not turn the needy away, but will have everything your brother will, sorry. You will not withhold your hand from your son or from your daughter, but you will teach them the fear of God from, from youth up. You will not command in your bitterness your slave or your uh, handmaid in hope in the same God, uh, lest they cease to fear the God who is over, over you, uh, over you both. For he does not come to call men with respect to persons, but um, those whom the Spirit has prepared. Notice how it says, do not hold, withhold your hand from your son or your daughter. And we live in a society when <laughs> we can go to jail because it we're supposedly hurting our... Um, our son and our daughter by um, reproving them, um, and we're hurting, hurting their, <laughs> hurting their character, or hurting their who they are. Um, it put it this way: I mean, if you're not reproved, and if if you're not punished, and we know when we're punished by God, I mean, it's like all of us can say, "Oh yeah, I've definitely been punished." Um, but yet we withhold punishment from those like our kids. Um, they have to know where, what was going on. And I have noticed, um, cause I've worked in schools, um, that right now the kids absolutely are out of control. Um, 
the um, the principals are nowhere to be seen. Um, I've 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 seen classes where half the class um, is taken to the dean's office or whatever, and then they come right back without any, even batting an eye, and um, instead of um, reproving them and have some kind of punishment or repercussions for what they've done. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, G- Susie. I'm sorry. You ha- I mean, it's just like we come up with the- all these excuses and the devil has made a, a way to which, um, which what we're doing, um, is not, um, is not what we're supposed to be doing anymore. Um, we need to, I mean, in the olden days, I mean, um, I have gotten hit on, on in the butt by a by a belt, and when those when those type of things happen, and I mean, yes, there's a fear. I mean, there is like there is there is abuse and abuse, and and uh, I'm sure people will disagree with me. Abuse is when you're constantly going after someone and. And not, and it's not punishment. It becomes a situation where they're constantly hitting and whatever. Um, so, um, <clears throat> but we're also supposed to, um, for the people that are around us, and that this has to do with um, who, like, if you're a boss, it's your employees. If if they're misbehaving and doing something wrong, they have to be punished. <laughs> I mean, I I would hope that they wouldn't be fired unless they did something really really bad, but we need to. Um, I mean, we've become a society where things that are evil are being, like, hey, come right on in, and things that are not evil, that we're supposed to shun and are not shun. Um, things that are not evil, we're like treating with like padded gloves. Okay, so let's see if I can pick up where um, you will hate all hypocrisy and everything that is not pleasing to the Lord. Uh, you will not forsake the commands of the Lord, but you will keep what you received, adding nothing to it and taking nothing away. In the congregation, you will confess your transgressions and you will not go yourself to prayer with an evil conscience. This is the way of life. Um, and it says you will not keep the, um, forsake the commands of the Lord. So that doesn't say that we're supposed to do away with it. There's, uh, the, oh, you're saved by grace scripture or it's not scripture, but, um, but that grace comes from, uh, Paul's letters where it says that by grace you're saved, um, and that God gives mercy to whom he gives mercy. And, um, but you can't dismiss the entire rest of the Bible if you believe this grace stuff. Everywhere else in the Bible, from what I've read, it's saying to confess. If you have anything against your brother or your spouse or anything, your mom, your dad, it says to go to them and to reconcile. It doesn't say, oh, well, just wash it over. I'm I'm saved by grace, so I don't have to do anything. Like, no, that doesn't work that way. Um... But and why would the prodigal son um be in there if you were saved by grace? It's like you can fall away is pretty much what it's saying. And then in Hebrews, I think it's Hebrews eleven, where it says that if you're saved and then you continue in your sin, um, then you have nothing um but the fear of punishment and um and judging by God Himself, because not only are you um, going against, I mean, you basically have made the cross a joke in a, in a lot of ways. Um, and it's, um, yeah, we just need to be cautious. Um, um, but yes, um, we are to respect, actually, I mean, We are supposed to respect 1,000% the person on the cross. We're supposed to take his blood upon us in order to cleanse us. But if you keep sinning and keep going back to sin, and yes, I know there's times when, yes, there's been times in my life where I have, where I've tried to turn away from something and kept going back, kept going back, kept going back, kept going back. 
And then one day I was, I was fed up and that's the, I mean, and that's what you have to do in your life. It's like, you have to get to that point where it's like, if I do this anymore, I'm going to go to the other place. And some people don't get a chance to, to correct. They're, um, they get in a major car accident and they die and they end up in hell. Um, so God gives us the chance to come back to him. And I think he already knows who's going to come back and who's not going to come back. I mean, he's, he's created us. And so he allows some of us to come back to him and others. It's like, well, you've, you've messed up. Um, but God's not a mean God. He's a God of long suffering and mercy. And he doesn't want any of us to go the opposite way. So, um, So, um, so this is on actually, um, this is chapter 15, but the way of death is this. First of all, it is wicked, full of cursing, murders, uh, adulteries, lust, fornications, theft, the idolatries, witchcrafts, charms, robberies, false witness, double heart, pr- fraud, pride, malice, stubbornness, covetousness, foul speech, jealousy, imp- uh, impudence, haughtiness, boastfulness, persecutors of the good, haters of the truth, lovers of lies, not knowing the reward of righteousness, not cleaving to the good, nor to righteous judgment, spending wakeful nights, not for good, but for wickedness, from whom meekness and patience is far, lovers of vanity. Vanity is like makeup. Um, It's basically being vain. It's basically turning your body uh, like with luxury and all kinds of things in order to hide the true you. Um, Like you can plait your hair. Um, I forgot where I read that. Um, but plaiting the hair is, is something that is wrong. Um, and makeup and other things and adding a whole lot of expensive jewelry, that's vanity. Um, and we're supposed to keep away from it. Falling after reward, unmerciful of the poor, not working for him who is oppressed with toil without knowledge of him who made them murderers or children, corruptors of God's creatures. Um, turning away the needy, pressing and distressed. And the reason why I have corruptors of God's creatures, we treat our um, what's around us like crap. Um, we have domain of them, but we absolutely, um, and God's going to punish us for this one. Um, we are not supposed to corrupt God's creation. <laughs> and we have. Um, all the GMOs that you see, um, you see the CRISPR technology. You see all these different things that we have turned uh, what God has um, rightfully made. And we've um, wronged it in many ways. Um, and we know it's sinful. Um, if you trash the environment, if you have litter and everything else, um, I have many times in my past uh, tried to clean up the neighborhoods around me Um and when I'm out walking now, if if I see trash, I try to pick it up. Um, but I live in a fairly decent neighborhood. But when I lived in Texas, I mean, I found like a bag of trash almost every time that I walked. So, um, but yeah, it's just, <clears throat> we're going to go on a little bit further. Okay. See that no one make you to err from this uh, way of the teaching, for he teaches you without God. For if you cannot bear the whole yoke of the Lord, you will be, for if you can bear the the whole yoke of the Lord, you will be perfect. But if you cannot, do what you can. And concerning food, bear what you can, but keep strictly um, from that which is offered to idols, for it is the worship of dead gods. Um. I don't know if you've seen my old videos. Um, I, there was one, I think it's an epistle of Barnab- uh, yeah, Barnabas um, that talks about food. And um, what I found interesting, it wasn't pertaining to the food. And there's been many times when food has been a allegory to people. Um, like when Peter saw a vision, I don't know which book, uh, but Peter saw a vision of a tablecloth and he was hungry and the table came down and they were all creatures that that he wasn't supposed to eat. Um, but God said, um, take and eat. Um, 
This was referring to the Gentiles. He was not at that time. Paul and him, I think, were going at it, and and he was um, not seeing that God wanted Peter and everyone else to go after the Gentiles as well. And so, um, so this was God's way of saying that you need to not only... Um, go after the the Jewish and the Israelites and my and God's people but it's at that point it, the his people was expanded um and God wants all of his people um that he has made i mean yes there are the one true people the Israelites are the one true people and like the 12 tribes of Israel um and so um but he wants us to go after all of them. Um, oh, <laughs> I was talking about this um, as well. Um, I think in my last video that I just made, um, I was talking about um, uh, the baptism. Uh, well, here's the thing. So, concerning immersion, uh, immerse thus, having first rehearsed all these things, immerse in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit in running water. Oh, it says running water. But if you have no running water, immerse in other water. And if you cannot in cold, then in warm. But if you have neither, pour water three times. Wow. In uh, the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Holy Spirit. Before the immersion, let the immerser in him who is the immersed fast and any others who are able and who will bid him who is to be immersed to fast one or two days before. So notice how it says that we're supposed to immerse in running water. Um, so I, I just did a video and um, you can, I, I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. I haven't gotten to that point. I think I'll probably call it like darkness or the coming darkness. But um, I talked about baptism. Um, sorry, this is off. Well, it's on topic because it was just mentioned. But... Um, I've been baptized in the past, and um, I felt led to do a, another baptism in running water. And that, as you see down there, is my running water. And that water, thankfully, it's not too cold. It was pretty cold, but it wasn't cold, cold. Um, but God wants us to... Uh, to bathe in running water, uh, like the Jordan River. Um, the Jordan River was running water. So, but it does kind of say that it's okay to do, um, and maybe that's God's way of trying to, like, be a part of the soul. And But he does encourage people, even after they're, um, if they're baptized by, as I was sprinkled on the head by um, uh, when I was a child, and uh, several times throughout my life, I've felt like I needed to fully immerse myself in water. Um, and as side note, <laughs> sorry, um, but I've noticed in my life that God doesn't fully give what's ahead of ahead of you until it's time to reveal it. Like there are certain things that if they were revealed 20 years ago, I would have flipped and I would have been like, nope, this is too hard. But God being an all knowing God, he knows how much we can take. He knows how far he can push. Um, and he, and I've even, I've had pastors tell me this where he just like he he starts real small like he'll he'll open it this way and then he'll he'll make it bigger and bigger and bigger um and if you go back to when you were a little kid it's like you didn't know very much and god didn't reveal too much because and i think that's another reason why god doesn't allow us to know our future is because if we knew our future <laughs> a lot of us we go nope i don't want to do that <laughs> And so um, there, there's times that that we're just like we don't want to do that. Um, but I've I've become stronger through a lot of trials and tribulations. Uh, this latest one has been an absolute. 
uh, it's been a very, very hard battle. And I pray and hope that I haven't lost um, my heavenly um, place. Um, Because I've said some things and done things that I'm not proud of. Um, But but that's the didache or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I'm going to have to leave because I have to pack up and uh, get this place uh, back in order so I can head out, um, head home. Uh, thank you for joining me. I think I'm going to keep going. Um, if I have time tonight, um, I I will try to keep going. Um, anyway, thank you for joining me. Um, and But yeah, I would encourage you to look at the didats on your own. It's not a very long book. It's... Uh, Compared to the others that are in this, um, it's not long at all. It's like 14 14 to 16 chapters. So thank you for joining me. Uh, Until next time.